Good morning, and welcome to Ark and Dove Presbyterian Church in Odenton, Maryland. I'm Jim Cooper, your host this week on The Lobby, the program about the life and ministry of the church. Today is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, and today is especially a happy day in the life of the church because we'll be welcoming six new members. We're pleased to welcome Craig West, Richard Gradonis, Tom and Yawanda Bailey, Catherine Westgard, and Diane Yates to full membership in a few minutes during the service. As the school year is getting underway, many of our youth-related programs are ramping up as well. We'll fill you in on that in a moment. And then later in the episode, we're gonna have a chat with Bob Fuller, who heads our earth care ministry about a new gizmo that you might notice in the kitchen. And Bob's gonna tell us all about it. So let's start the announcements. This Tuesday evening, we've got two things happening. The grief group, meets at 7 p.m. over Zoom. And then Michelle Schoonmaker and Katie Nilsson Johnson will present a class on intersectionality and the church, also at seven on a different Zoom. Uh, that class continues on Wednesday evening and we'll be learning about reproductive rights and the church. On Wednesday morning at 10 and every Wednesday morning at 10, Pastor Stephen Price Gibson will lead a lectionary-based Bible study over Zoom. No homework or prep is required for this class. As you may have been hearing, the community engagement project is getting underway, and we need many members to help with our door knocking effort on the morning of Saturday, September 24th. Training, breakfast, and lunch will be provided. One of the prime reasons many people say they love about Ark and Dove is our thriving community of young people and the excellent programs for children and youth that we have. And now you have an opportunity to help keep these excellent programs going by volunteering to help with Sunday school or youth groups. Many more volunteers are needed, so please see Sarah Fox for a full rundown of the opportunities. We have a long-standing practice of learning about and using our spiritual gifts. It's time to update our understanding of our gifts, so please take a spiritual gifts inventory. It's a questionnaire uh, to learn about your own gifts. A class will be offered on October 6th as part of our Equipping the Saints series to interpret these inventories. Dinner is always a part of the Equipping the Saints gatherings. Please find links to the inventory in the archive. ACT, Anne Arundel Connecting Together, is getting active around the upcoming election and other local topics. Learn how to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting and then practice your skills at a relational mixer next Monday, September 9th at First Presbyterian Church of Annapolis. You can also meet our newly hired organizer, Katie Ashmore Zindler. ACT will be holding several actions this fall, including a candidates forum on October 6th, right here at the church, for candidates for Anne Arundel County Council and County Executive. We'll need many volunteers for this event, including a tech team for a hybrid style meeting, hospitality, registration, and parking. Please see Cheryl Walcott if you can help out. All this month, we'll be collecting a special offering to support peace and global witness measures. This year, our offering will go toward ACT to support the work they do to organize our community and improve the lives of everyone living and working in Anne Arundel County. So please give generously. Do you have a middle schooler? Are they into bugs or British pop rock? We're looking to resume the loyal order of the Beatles. And it has nothing to do with bugs or John Paul, George and Ringo. This is a different kind of Beatle, B-E-A-D-L-E-S. And it's a program that allows uh, middle schoolers to participate in the worship experience. So if you've got a middle schooler at home, Sarah Hendricks may be getting in touch with you with an invitation to see if your middle schooler would like to join the Loyal Order. The new food of the month for CAP for this month is a classic, peanut butter and jelly. So as you stock up for school lunches, please get an extra set for CAP and leave it in the mission collection bins across from the coat rack. And finally, after all these great volunteer efforts, let's have some fun. Our annual church picnic is next Saturday at 4.30 and will include a chili cook-off. Sign up to bring your best carnivore or vegetarian chili recipe. This is always a fun time to relax 
and hang out for friends. And now I'm happy to welcome Bob Fuller. How you doing, Robert? I'm doing great. Great, good to see you. I know that you've been heading up our Earth Care team, and I noticed there's something new in the kitchen, and I hear you had something to do with it. Uh, what's this thing in the little yellow case on the shelf? So in the yellow case on the shelf in the kitchen is a methane detector. The reason we have a methane detector and the reason Earth Care is interested in uh, methane detector is that actually methane is a very potent greenhouse gas. Uh, it's actually 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide that we're normally worried about. Recent studies have shown that actually underestimated the amount of methane that's being released every year. Uh, there's a recent study that uh, cities along the East Coast, like all the way down to Baltimore, emit 890,000 tons of methane every year. Believe it or not, a lot of it comes from homes and businesses, very small leaks that, that you can't smell that are coming out of the uh, gas appliances. Uh, methane is the primary component of natural gas and propane and things like that. And so millions of homes with very small leaks can cause a lot of damage to our environment. i would heard about problems with stockyards and and uh, dairy farms and, and hog farms and stuff being a, a big producer of methane, but I didn't realize it that uh, most of it was coming from us. They estimate that almost half of what's coming is uh, coming from leaks in, in people's homes. I think I also remember hearing that it's basically odorless, but that the natural gas companies introduce something into the, into the line to give it an odor so that if there's a, a major leak, folks can detect it. Is that, do I have that right? That's correct. An odor is added by the natural gas companies, but we're talking about leaks that are too small to actually smell. So, you know, if you smell gas in your house, it, it's, it could be a dangerous situation. Right. But these small leaks are, are, are not really dangerous, but except for our environment. The EPA does not consider small amounts of methane to be a, a health hazard. It is a hazard to our environment. And that's why the Earth Care team is interested in uh, getting people to check their homes for, for methane leaks. Terrific. This isn't like a smoke detector that you attach to the wall or the ceiling and it runs all the time, right? This is a a different this is almost like a breathalyzer or the or the device you take your car to uh get your uh emissions done that's a very good analogy yes we're just looking for leaks in the house that can be corrected and fixed perhaps a stove wasn't installed properly or maybe there's a leak has developed it's not something that you need to be monitoring all the time because you know for major leaks you can smell it's something you can use periodically maybe once a year just to check your house to be sure there are no leaks of methane Oh, so this is something that a church member could take home, borrow, check out, and use at their house then. It's not just for the church. We encourage people to actually check it out and take go home and test their house for, for uh, methane leaks. And um, if you want to borrow the methane detector, just uh, contact me, uh, Bob Fuller, as part of the Earth, Earth Care team. And I just need to know where it is and when you're going to bring it back. <laughs> gotcha. So it's like the library. Um, exactly. Are there instructions on how to use this thing? Yes, it's, it's very easy to use. The uh, instructions are included, but it's very easy. You just turn it on and in a, uh, there's a little thumb wheel that you use. It takes 15 seconds to like warm up. A little green light comes on. Then you adjust the little thumb wheel so that in fresh air so that the, it's not making any noise. And then when you take it near uh, a gas appliance, if there's a leak, it'll start making noise and a little indicator will, will go up. And, and let you know that there is a leak. Great. So if you have a pilot light in your water heater or you have a gas burner, then you have natural gas and you might want to avail yourself of this new opportunity. Another question, does this detect other kinds of gas? Like if I, you know, I have a, a lawn tractor in my shed, if I was concerned about a gasoline leak or a fuel leak there, do you know whether this would pick up other kinds of flammable gases or is it tuned just to methane? I think it's primarily for methane, which means okay. it will detect natural gas, propane, and things like that. Gotcha. This sounds great, Bob. What else is the uh, Earth Care Ministry up to? So we have several projects going on. Uh, one is we're trying to get the uh, church on solar power so that we can be green uh, and clean. Uh, we are working on a, uh, a seminar on how to divest from energy stocks that are causing uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, we are offering some training. We're putting articles in the archive to inform people about the situation and um, working on some recycling things as well. So we got a lot going on. Excellent. God bless you for this work. And thank you for uh, looking out for the environment and looking out for the members of Ark and Dove. And uh, thank you for being here this morning and 
teaching us something new that I didn't know about. So appreciate it. You're most welcome. Thanks for everyone for watching. I hope you have a good week and the live stream service starts now.